Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again today. So today I'm just uh, driving around, picking up more parts and things for work and um, I had to take both the uh, Polaris's down and get them uh, serviced and uh, had to get a new belt put on the, uh, the General because I had a bit of slipping going on. So I thought I'd do a video today just while I'm driving around, just do a vlog and a bit of a uh, F250 towing video. So on the back the my if you haven't seen my previous videos if you go back to some of my my first videos there's a video of my uh 10 meter long plant trailer so it's uh full aluminium it's got a timber deck it's got a twelve and a half thousand pound winch on it um light bars all the rest of it um independent suspension so it's a trail i do most of my towing with when, I, when I'm using the F truck. So the trailer weighs about 1,700 kilos on its own. Um, and then each Polaris, or give or take, they're about 850 kilos each. So it definitely is a night and day difference when you tow with a truck this size, Ford, Chevy, whatever it is, Ram, compared to some of the Australian utes just how at ease these things are at doing it. Um, so here's my trailer, if you guys haven't seen it yet. So full aluminium trailer, light bars, winch, battery, solar powered um, charging system for the battery. So that way my battery's always there, stay charged. DO45 hitch. And I've got the Ranger 1000. And obviously, you all know my Polaris 1000 from previous videos. Fold flat ramps. So she's uh, she's pretty long when I've got everything on there, but um, handles it no drama. Just another thing that blows me away while you're towing is how many assholes there are. Like if you're like, <laughs> like I'd be pushing if my trailer's 10 meters long the F-Truck's probably oh, give or take 7 meters long I'm 17 meters long like I'm as long as some semi-trailers like and people just want to scoot up the inside if you're in a if you're if I'm on the outside in the slow lane wanting to merge across because the lanes are ending two lanes coming to one I could have 50 metres of, of run out left, had my indicator on for the past 30 seconds and people want to come up and squeeze up, they're already at the back of my trailer trying to squeeze in, making me break. I don't break. I just hit the blinker and pull over. <laughs> they're going to move because they're not going to want their car damaged, so they get the brakes real quick. It's pretty funny. I just can't believe how many inconsiderate people and everybody's in a rush. Calm down. You're going to get to where you're going. But then what's funny is that the people that do get up the inside of you and get around you and, and whatever and carry on and drive down there, they get stopped at the next set of lights. So it, it just defeats the purpose. And then Hey, guys. So it's the uh, next day. I'm just leaving TJM. Just bought some uh, more mob armor gear. So I bought the, um, the one that goes on my rooftop tent. The uh, tablet one, tablet version. So if you guys need any uh, any equipment in the valley, come see Michael at TJM, Hunter Valley, awesome dude. But yeah, just going to continue on the video with towing and that with the F250. Um, a lot of people are buying like 200 Land Cruisers and stuff like that for towing, but really, in in my opinion. You're not really getting much more by going with a 200 series Land Cruiser because they're, they're, they still do chew a lot of fuel. I know one of my mates has one, he has a 200, and it's like 22 per 100 towing a, a pretty big caravan, so which is more than the F truck. Like the F truck right now, I'm not loaded, I've just got the deck system in the back, so that's really all the weight I have. But I, I do have bull bar, winch, roof rack, um, etc., etc. So, and I'm using 16.8 per hundred with uh yeah no nothing on the back 
that may get a little bit better when I put the canopy on there, just give it a bit more streamline. Um, probably not much, but yeah, I'm running. I'm also running 37s, so I've got 18 by nines with 37 BF Goodrich KO2s on. Um, so yeah, when you're towing with a very underpowered vehicle for what you want to tow, like the numbers might be right on paper when you buy your Ford Ranger or whatever, three and a half ton. They're not really three and a half ton. Like, Three and a half ton behind a range is just stupid. Like you're asking for trouble, so just make the decision. What are you towing? How often are you towing it? If you're going to do like a trip around Australia and you want to tow three and a half ton van, you need to step up and go for a bit of overkill, like a, with an F truck, 79s and 200s. They they might do it, but I. They're just, they're still a very small vehicle. They've got the engine, but they just don't have that ground footprint that like an F-Truck does or some of these big American trucks do to be able to counteract swaying and all that sort of stuff. And it's, yeah. So you definitely want that, that larger vehicle if you're gonna tow those heavy weights. That's why I went for the F-Truck because I tow a Bobcat and a small excavator. And like you seen yesterday, the Polaris is on the back, so. You definitely want to overkill. You just you got that ease of mind that everything's going to be fine. But probably another thing to add to that is that uh, your payload capacity. So because the F truck for me is multi-purpose, I use it for work and I also use it uh, heavy towing. I also use it for camping and stuff, and it, it is getting set up the Overland build, um, which is all waiting on this damn canopy from Snug Top. So. I'm gonna have like a clamshell tent, a fridge, drawers, um, blah, 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 me winch and everything. So all that take, comes into consideration as well. So you can't like, you go and get a 200 series cruiser and then you go and add all that gear to it and then you wanna tow heavy again. You can't do it. It's, you just, you're gonna, you're gonna have an accident because you're going way over your payload then you've got to go into GVM upgrades and all this sort of crap. So it just, like 200 series, they're the same price as these things. Like give or take a, a few bucks here and there, but um, just go for something that is designed to carry that sort of weight. By the time you kit out a 200 series, you're putting a lot of weight on that vehicle and they're already very heav heavy as they are. So just take that into consideration your payload as well and is the vehicle multi-purpose are you using the vehicle for touring um just camping in that by itself um or so that way you kind of have the if you wanted to take your caravan park it up at a, at a nice location then take the car out for the day to the beach and um, four-wheel drive tracks and things like that um yeah you've got to take that payload into consideration of how much extra weight you're going to have on the vehicle as well because that's going to affect your tow capacity so just another thing to think about. I've bloody got a big, big lump here. I went and got a tattoo laser removal this morning. It was pretty, pretty funny. Um, a lot of people said that it hurts. It it, 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 it stings. It doesn't hurt. It's a sting, but it's like a super fast rubber band. Like someone getting a rubber band and just flicking it either really hard and really fast. So, but yeah, I got um. I got some uh, laser removal done on this tattoo on my chest that I don't want anymore and also one in the middle of my back that I don't want anymore so just uh, dumb decisions when you're uh, 15 years old get your first tattoos so I'll, uh, if you guys want I'll do a video of the next session um, it's probably in about eight weeks time the next when I can go for another one but um, yeah pretty pretty funny so anyway leave a comment below if you want me to video me going for laser tattoo removal and I'll video the, the whole the whole thing so it's also the smell of your skin burning oh it's disgusting it's so anyway totally off topic but um yeah just another thing that happened today thought I'd let you know but if you've got a a three and a half ton caravan or you've got a two and a half ton caravan if you've got a two and a half ton caravan range is probably fine just have that 
you can get a ton gap between what your maximum is and what your trailer weighs, then that should be a pretty good combination. So, yeah, like yesterday, me towing both Polaris's and my trailer, I was probably at about, uh, I don't know, maybe three and a half ton. And in Australia, the max behind these you can tow um, under my license is um, is four and a half tons. So then you have to go obviously to light rigid, blah, 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 and so forth, up heavy equipment and stuff. So I'll catch you guys on the video that I'm gonna put up tomorrow. Um, that'll be up tomorrow night, if not Monday, if I don't get time tomorrow, because if this uh, traction bar situation blows out, I've never fitted them before. I'm just going off the online video that BDS has up and the instructions and that. So um, I'd probably say it's gonna take me um, at least half a day, if not most of the day, to get these installed. There's um, a bit of drilling involved and, and so forth. So anyway, guys, hope you guys have a fantastic Saturday and I will speak to you on Sunday night or Monday. So, all right guys, see you later.